An often overlooked aspect of LEGO games on this channel are the extras, as fun as they are. I mean, I ranked the super items and hats in LEGO Movie 2 game since I couldn't rank anything else, but on the whole I've almost denied their existence. But I get requests all the time to rank the extras of LEGO games, and I mean, I've, con I've considered it but ultimately decided against it. The reason why is because most LEGO games generally have the same extras. There might be a few extras specific to a game, but they all share the same type of extras. Stud multipliers, invincibility, what have you. But lucky for you guys, for this part's introduction segment, I'm ranking the 20 extras in LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm gonna try to be quick about it, so half the video isn't just this. But, I mean, I've said that in the past, like, for example, my Jackbox Party Pack 4 ranking, where I rank the monsters and Monster Seeking Monsters. Go check that video out if you haven't. But, I can't keep any promises. It is what it is. So, let, let's just get started. Number 20, Disguises. The extras that do nothing but change the appearance of your characters or your view are always going to be last in ranking. Groucho glasses will never help me in these games. Number 19, Extra Toggle. Extra Toggle has appeared in several LEGO games, and it's pretty interesting. Basically, with it on, you can switch to characters not in the roster, typically NPCs that you see in levels. They change depending on the level you play, but most of the time they're enemies that you fight, and I mean honestly not very exciting. In the Tortuga level you can switch to Giselle and Scarlet, you know the two girls that slap Jack Sparrow and stuff, but other than that, all these characters are on the same level of characters we saw in like the first two parts, so they don't really get much notice from me. Number 18, Red Hat Finder. Red Hats are the things you find to unlock the extras for purchase. There are 20 throughout the hub world, and this extra points them out to you. It seems pretty redundant. If you happen to find this one last, then it would be completely useless because you would have all the extras available for purchase or unlocked already. Number 17, Minikit Bottle Finder. This works the same as the Red Hat Finder, just for mini kits and levels. Since there are 200 mini kits as opposed to only 20 Red Hats, the mini kit Bottle Finder is automatically more useful. Number 16, Character Treasure. Enemies now drop studs when you defeat them. Neat, but not as much of a bonus as you think. Number 15, Treasure Magnet. Same deal as Character Treasure in that it's an added bonus and pretty useful when filling that true pirate meter. Number 14, Always Double Treasure. This one is just a two times stud multiplier, or, or should I say another two times stud multiplier, since there's a separate two times stud multiplier, which is actually number 13. Really shows how much they had to stretch to get these 20 extras. Number 12 through number 9 are the rest of the stud multipliers, which are 4 times, 6 times, 8 times, and 10 times. The multipliers are pretty lower than I thought they would be in ranking, but it's because the multipliers are pointless after you buy everything. No point in getting studs if there's nothing to buy. The rest of the extras are useful whether or not you bought everything. So, I guess let's carry on with that. Number 8, Extra Hearts. You have 6 hearts instead of 4. Less dying, you know. Number 7, Regenerate Hearts. Your hearts re regenerate now, which is useful in combat. Number 6, Breathe Underwater. Characters without underwater walk can now breathe underwater instead of their blue hearts ticking down when underwater. Number 5, Fast Forge. You forge faster. Self-explanatory. Number four is fast dig because you dig more. Number three is fast build because you build most. Number two, fall rescue. This one saved me a pretty penny amount of times. You no longer fall to your death with the game actually saving you. Definitely useful if you drop 2,000 unrecoverable studs. And number one is of course invincibility. I no longer have to try in combat. Not that I was trying that hard to begin with in a Lego game, but yep, that's it. I did it. How'd I do on time? I see a wall of text on the script, but I have no idea how long that will translate into video form. But however long it is, is you saw it, you can see the, 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 you know, the video bar thing. But I did it. I ranked the extras. Let's just move on. Now I was sincerely stretching for time with that last guy, but now we have a third cursed crewmate that has the exact same two mechanics with his sword and underwater walk. So how will I justify his ranking? I I'll go with his name, Clubba. Succinct, straight to the point. He's a clubber, he clubs people, but if that's the case, why doesn't he have a club? A sword slices, it doesn't club. I, I know from experience. Maybe the sword on the flat side could be a blunt object, but whatever. The appearance of the character is something I touched on with Scratch, and Clubba has even less going on. 
No offense to bald people. But on the bright side, he's the most stereotypical skeleton when he steps into the moonlight. I might have not ever mentioned this, but whenever a cursed crewmate with the underwater walk ability walks into the moonlight, they turn into their skeleton forms. This is interesting because this happens only in the Isla de Muerta level, or in the hub world if you grab that Aztec coin near the lighthouse and turn into one as well, with any character you please. Here we see a new ability, but one that will dominate a good portion of the remaining characters. First of all, this is Jimmy Legs. Do not ask me why he's called that. Maybe he has some stellar looking legs under those rags, but I'm not interested in taking a look for myself. Jimmy Legs was the bosun of the Flying Dutchman? A bosun, I hope I'm saying that right. I think I am. I'm pretty sure David Jones said it in the movie, actually. Your issue will be like staying here for the bosun and uh, uh, your own. But a bosun is basically the guy who manages the crew on a ship, so naturally he gets a whip. I've covered whips before as a weapon, and that they suck. The fish-like qualities of the Flying Dutchman crew unlocks two bare minimum abilities, and Jimmy Legs has both. The first one is a familiar one, the underwater walk. Turns out, whether you identify as a Flying Dutchman crewmate or a Cursed Black Pearl crewmate, you get the underwater walk no matter what. The other ability we see with Jimmy Legs is the new one, Coral. Essentially, there's a green blob of moss that can be accessed by those with the Coral ability and then they go somewhere else. It's pretty commonly used for free play purposes, but there's one level where you play a Coral character and it's pretty neat to actually play it in the story mode of the level. All Flying Dutchman crewmates from here on out will have the Underwater Walk and Coral at the very least. There's quite a few random Dutchman crewmates with the weirdest names crammed into these last 30 segments, and this one is no exception. And now, like Cole Emergency Room, I have to guess the pronunciation for this guy, and I'm just going to take a stab at it, okay? Hadras? 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 Hadras is what I'm going with. Ability-wise, Hadras does not differ from Jimmy Legs. There are two reasons why I ranked Hadras higher. One, I don't like the name Jimmy Legs. It's just strange and out of place compared to the other names you'll see with the Dutchman crew. The second is weapon choice. Sure, Jimmy Legs has a subpar whip, but Hadras has these weird knuckle knife thingies on each hand. It's pretty cool and Hadras is the only character with these unique weapons. Also, you can wear Hadras' shell hat if you defeat him in a level. Does Jimmy Legs have wearable body parts? Don't say his legs. Okay, I know both Cursed Crewmates and Dutchman Crewmates, they both get the Underwater Walk by default. What if I told you zombies get it too? Yes, zombies exist in the Pirates of the Caribbean universe thanks to Blackbeard. But with Cursed Crewmates, it makes sense because of that one scene where they walked underwater. Dutchman Crewmates, it makes sense because they operate underwater. But zombies? Underwater Walk does not make sense for zombies. If anything, Zombies are technically dead, so they should float because dead bodies always float on water, and don't ask me why I know that. But yeah, zombies get underwater walk. Only the officers of the Queen Anne's Revenge are zombified to stay in line to prevent a mutiny. But zombies, aside from the underwater walk, get another ability, which is strength. You know the one. Use the orange handles and pull open walls, chests, whatever else. Gunner's job was to discipline crewmates, so... Of course, he gets a whip. The weapon choice really kind of throws me off because his name is Gunner. Can I give him a gun? He's the 27th best out of 80, so who am I to judge? Macus here is a member of the Flying Dutchman, and his shtick is the fact that he has a hammerhead. You know, a, a hammer head. He, he, he looks like a hammerhead shark, that's what I'm trying to say. But a humanoid shark, like Victor Crumb in the Goblet of Fire, but without the buffness. Anyway, Macus has a whopping three abilities in this game, which is a huge... Of course he gets the Flying Dutchman crewmate gimmies, coral, and underwater walk. The extra special something he brings is the ranged ability. We've seen ranged before in the pistol, spear, and blow dart wielders, but never like this. Ladies and gentlemen... And by ladies and gentlemen, I mean gentlemen, because 98.1% of you are. 
Macus wields an axe. Axe wielders in this game can toss them to get bullseye targets. It's a shame because the reason for axes being able to be thrown is because of one of the main characters of the original trilogy. But we haven't covered him yet, so I guess I have to spoil the axe wielding here. Oh well, it's not like you guys didn't know what an axe was before now, so... Oh man, it's time for that game. You know the one. The Guess the Pronunciation game. And once you know it, we got a double header. The Try to Find Differences in Four Characters with the Exact Same Ability game comes right after this one, the Pronunciation game. First things first though, the guy's name. I'm going to have to do the same thing as I did with Kohler and Hadras and just s s take a stab and stick with it. Cole Nico. Cole as in Cole from Ninjago, and Nico as in the word nicotine if you delete the last half of the word. Cole cigarette. And man, am I on a roll. Anyway, Cole Nico here is yet another Flying Dutchman crewmate, and kind of a basic one, if I'm being honest. Nothing against pirate do-rags, but LEGO sure likes to use it as the default hat piece for in insignificant pirates, especially in the pirate sets that have come out over the years. But as a Flying Dutchman pirate, you already know what two abilities Cole Nico gets right off the bat. That's right, it's Coral and Underwater Walk. The third one, well, I'll just save it for the next segment, as I'll need things to talk about. But if you can observe the game footage of Cole Nico, you probably already know. Next up is Angler, and at first I... I wasn't going to blame TT Games for this, but then I looked up what Angler actually looks like in the movies, and I'm giving full blame to TT Games. He just looks so bland in the game, and so I just assumed he looked bland in the movie. He looks pretty cool based on the one out-of-focus picture I could find. His concept art is cool too. I know the minifigure technology was terribly outdated back then compared to now, but surely they could have done better than this. They gave him the little Angler tentacle. Thing on his forehead so I guess it's not terrible just not optimal enough to earn him his mandatory coral and underwater walk abilities though you know I did mention an ability that angler Cole Nico and the upcoming two characters have but I'm just so deep in this segment I feel like I should just push off that third ability until the next guy sorry guys I, I know how much you're itching to know I swear, I just, I just said I was going to do something in this segment, but then I saw the name of this character, Clanker. Ring any bells? Well, it's a trip down memory lane for me. Seven years ago, at the time of this recording, I was working on part 10 of my first ever LEGO game ranking. Talking about bounty hunters and whatnot. Oh, look at me using 4x3 aspect ratio for some reason. And no, I won't unmute this. I don't need to hear my inexperienced narration voice. Looking back at old videos is a double-edged sword. On one hand, nostalgia. On the other hand, an unbearable cringe. Anyway, what is the game I'm doing a ranking on? Oh right, LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean. Clanker, who shares the name with what clones call droids, which is what made me go down that memory lane trip. He, uh, he, he's a Flying Dutchman crewmate with Coral and Underwater Walk and whatever. Really, I only ranked him higher than Angler and Cole Nico because his name is Clanker. But his last ability that he shares with Cole Nico and Angler is... Oh, would you look at the script line quota? We gotta move on. Shucks, sorry about that, folks. It's a shame we have to cover Will Turner's surprise ocean zombie dad before Will Turner himself, but we already covered his axe... He, so he probably won't mind this either. Bootstrap Bill is not only the father of Will Turner, but was also a member of the Black Pearl during the mutiny of Captain Jack Sparrow. Dude regretted it, gave his gold piece to Will, and was shot out of a cannon by Barbosa. Then made a deal with Davy Jones at the bottom of the ocean to serve a sentry on the Flying Dutchman. Yeah, the guy got shafted, but I think being a crewmate under Davy Jones is miles better than chilling at the bottom of the ocean for eternity. And what are the chances Davy Jones would be visiting the bottom of the ocean at the exact place that Bootstrap Bill was? Surely, the best thing that could have happened to him at that point, since he was literally at rock bottom. And hey, he went from just the undercover walk because of the Aztec curse, to underwater walk and coral because of the Flying Dutchman. 
Oh, and also Sword. Sword is his third ability, just like Clanker, Angler, and Colnico, but come on, you're smart probably. You didn't need me to tell you that. Come on. This guy is one I'm shocked to see in this game, and even more shocking that he is up this high on the list. Frankly, it's because of his exclusive but not really exclusive ability, but I'll get to that. First, let's get familiar with who this guy even is. Brown skeleton with brown joker hair, right? Well, at first glance, yes, but he was featured in a scene in Dead Man's Chest. Wyvern's whole thing was that he was merging with the whole of the Flying Dutchman, you know, which makes his addition to the roster even more confusing. Now, how is this guy out of the hole? Even though he's not so much a crewmate of the Flying Dutchman and more like a part of the Flying Dutchman, he still gets the complementary Dutchman abilities, the underwater walk and coral abilities. His kind of exclusive ability is the light ability. Throughout the game, there are giant tentacles everywhere. You know, Davy Jones, you know, he's doing his thing. Blocking passages, chilling in barrels, you name it, they're there. Having a source of light makes them go away. These sources of light are similar to shovels in that they're everywhere. You don't typically need someone to wield a lantern full time. Wyvern does anyway. Wyvern's lantern makes for an alright weapon, also similar to the shovel, but I mean not anything really worth your wear. Okay, you try coming up with new things to say every time it's time to show the counts. Wow. Not even a chance was given. Dead Man's Chest gets the win for this part due to the insane number of Dutchman crewmates in this game, tying it with the Curse of the Black Pearl and At World's End. Can On Stranger Tides catch up? We'll see.